Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europe. Jeez. Good morning. This is Bill from Auto House of Naples on a... You know what? It's not that bad. It's not really that bad of a Florida Tuesday. Uh, we had a little bit of a front blow through yesterday. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Not expecting it. Hadn't really been checking the weather because... Frankly, why bother? The weather's just going to say hot, or it's going to say rainy, or it's going to say both. And then all of a sudden, this big rainstorm comes through. Everything gets wet and drenched, and I feel like I have trench foot and whatnot. And uh, behind it came this lovely, crisp, low humidity weather that uh, was just absolutely shocking for Florida in September. So uh, I can't say I'm not chipper. I really can't. I also heard about Ulf, a friend of mine, a German guy. He did his uh, car once on a review uh, and he was attacked by a duck. And I would just like to point out that I have been predicting this for a long time. Uh, the birds are getting pissed off and they may be coming for us. And I mean, this duck viciously went after him. He came in with a limp, with a bandage. Uh, he didn't want to tell me what had happened, but uh, I did pry it out of him. And I'm going to try like hell to get him to tell his story on film. He actually ended up having to get a lift from neighbors. Uh, he was hiding behind the mailboxes at his condo uh, because the duck was still looking for him. He said he kicked it, he kicked it, it kept coming back, it flew at him. Uh, it was an incredible story and especially wonderful, told with a German accent. So for the sake of hilarity, I'm going to do what I can to get that going. Uh, today, I have this 1984 for Oldsmobile Delta 88 Royale Brome. Uh, that's quite a mouthful. Uh, one year before the final rear-wheel drive Oldsmobile, uh, well, certainly the final sedan rear-wheel drive. They kept, I think they kept the wagon going for a while. Uh, but uh, this was the end of the sort of beginning of the GM downsizing. Uh, this body, it's a B body. It came out in 1977. Uh, one of the most successful GM platforms of all time, probably against their own, you know, expectations and uh, sold very, very well. And a lot of people went nuts for this car because it was such a damn good car. Uh, it had a variety of engines. This one does have the 307 Oldsmobile, which is a terrific uh, V8. Also the last of the Rocket 88. Uh, V8s that uh, was going to be offered. Uh, I did get some flack for saying Oldsmobile had come up with the first mass production V8, the Ford flathead. I get it. Okay, the first overhead valve mass production V8 in 49. Uh, that spawned, you know, truly an amazing amount of love and affection throughout the years. And I still do hold it against GM for killing Oldsmobile. I think it was completely unnecessary. Uh, they just shouldn't have done it. And he even spawned the first rock and roll song by, um, who though? It was actually Ike Turner, but it was, uh, no, oh, I don't know. Somebody in the Delta 88 cruisers or some shit like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but it was really truly considered one of the first rock and roll songs, and it was spawned by an Oldsmobile. Then there was that uh, Oldsmobile song in like 1908 about that loose woman who was riding around in a curved dash Oldsmobile. So uh, for, you know, a car company that's been long gone, it's still pretty widely acclaimed in uh, pop culture and still talked about today. And that's why uh, I bought this thing when I saw it. I just, I really like two-door full-frame rear-drive cars, for one thing, and uh, I'm also a bit fascinated by Oldsmobile, but uh, anyway, there it is. We could get into all this, you know, Ransom Olds, REO Speed, all the stuff I did a couple of days ago. Uh, if you want to hear a brief history of Oldsmobile, uh, look back for that 76, 98 coupe we just did. You get it there. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to get into this thing, because the sun's coming out, and... I'm probably too long-winded anyway, and God knows we don't need to get into politics. Look at that Royale. Gotta love it. Here's one little complaint I have, is this little trunk lip here that you have to get, squeeze in to grab with your two fingers. You want to pull up here, but you have to get it there, and that's kind of annoying. Uh, anyway, enormous trunk with a tiny spare tire, go figure, that was the way of the 80s at GM. Uh, you know, there's some mats there, everything nice and proper. Uh, still has all the stickers, the jacking instructions, the wire wheel cover, that sort of thing. And uh, enormous area to put stuff. Uh, I think at 84 they had Dick Van Patten doing commercials for an Oldsmobile, and you know, of course they did. Of course they did. 
Why wouldn't they? I also believe the amber and red taillights were special uh, to this year. Probably came out in 84. And what a great year 84 was for me and for everyone else. I mean, uh, you want to talk about pop culture. You had Madonna doing her grindy dance at the MTV Music Awards. You had uh, the Gremlins out. You had Ghostbusters out. Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, Amadeus. It was truly a great year for movies. Pretty good year for mass shootings as well. There was that famous one uh, at McDonald's where a guy killed like 21 people. At the time, it was the most uh, deadly mass shooting in uh, American history. Now it's like 57th or something, but back then it was a big deal. And uh, not just in the United States, but also globally. Uh, there were shootings in Canada, Australia, Europe. Everyone was going nuts, maybe because of the book. Uh, you know, everyone thought Orwell was on the way. Uh, anyway, uh, 307 Oldsmobile, you can always tell an Olds motor by this stick-up uh, oil filler neck there that's kind of neat. And uh, what a great motor, this 307, this 5-liter Oldsmobile is. Just a terrific engine. Smooth, lovely. Uh, I want to say this one's rated at 140, but, you know, it feels like more, and feels like it has more torque than that, certainly. And uh, it's just a terrific V8 under the hood of this thing. Uh, made it to a Turbo Hydra 350, great transmission. Very smooth shifting, lovely, goes down the road properly. Uh, you know, you wouldn't believe the way this thing drives. I mean, I liked the car until I drove it, and then I loved it. I mean, this thing just drives like a champion. Let's get that back down. Now, I presume because this is the Brome, the upscale model, uh, that's why it has the sort of classic Oldsmobile uh, badge there on the uh, hood ornament, uh, while it's also got the Rocket Oldsmobile badge there. So you've got kind of a conflation of badges, which is typical GM. Uh, you also have the split grill, nice stuff. That's an Oldsmobile thing with the quad lamps on the corners, uh, nice little bumperettes, big chrome uh, bumper, and, you know, again, just classic American styling, right down to that big chrome strip in the uh, in the middle of the hood the chrome mirrors eh, I just love it also the quarter top with the opera windows you gotta like that uh, those things light up uh, you know I, I go into advanced auto park to find their uh, opera window section to replace the bulbs and of course then <laughs> all the badging on this car is hilarious there's the Royale Brome badging on the uh, vinyl quarter top uh, and of course the uh, uh, always been logo on the wire wheel covers, these coffin lid door handles, you know, the big uh, impact strip down the side. I don't know. I just, I dig this car. Okay, inside, loads and loads of red cloth, which, uh, you know, looks very, very stylish. This was a way for people to get, like, Cadillac luxury without actually buying a Cadillac. Uh, you know, it's full of chrome, full of all sorts of bits from the B-body that just feels very Cadillac-ish, uh, while at the same time being significantly less expensive. So people dug that. People like Dick Van Patten, apparently. And uh, what was their ad campaign in 85? The gallant men of Oldsmobile. You have to absolutely love of the, uh, the proper, you know, sexism of the 80s. Well, I just miss it. Every damn day do I miss that. Uh, you know, these giant door panels, absolutely amazing. Big pole strips with uh, unashamed fake wood everywhere. Oddly, this one came without power windows. <laughs> We've got these things that no millennial on earth will recognize. Uh, just don't tell them. Let them try to figure out how to put a window down, and that'll be kind of fun. Uh, does have power locks. And of course, you know, again, in GM, only in GM could you get this top of the line uh, brome coupe with window cranks. It just absolutely kills me. Uh, there you've got more fake wood and chrome on the back of the seat. Uh, you got a lovely, you know, pillowy, fluffy, uh, padded rear place for your Canadians with the Brome logo there in the center. All very lovely and proper. You could fit three people back there, no issues. Uh, you know, this two-door coupe has more room than most modern four-door sedans. Let's hop in and fire it up. It's all very standard. What's that big V8 cranked in life? It's even not that big, but it's just nice to hear it rumble. If I had this thing, I'd probably put dual exhaust on it and turbo mufflers just for fun. Turn this day for us stuff, and we got Twisted Sister on the radio. That's great. 
Okay, here you've got this lovely horizontal uh, instrument cluster, you know, hearkening back to 50 years or more of American style, and probably one of the last cars to have. Well, that's not true. They kept it for a while, but I still like seeing it anyway. Uh, neat little shiny aluminum surrounding the cluster. Uh, you got a tilt steering column with this lovely little uh, hub there with the two little horn buttons. Nice big potent horn. Let's get some AC going. It's a little bit, a little bit humid in here. Uh, you got your light switch over here. You've got your column shifter up there. Uh, all very lovely stuff. Uh, over here, you've got your air conditioning. More unashamed fake wood. I mean, they had zero shame about that at all. Bring it on. Bring on the fake wood by the yard and the leader. Uh, you've got to. Now, this is, you know, again, the sort of ergonomics these cars had. Okay, so I'm sitting here properly where I want to be sitting. It's all very nice. Uh, but I want to adjust my mirror over on the right-hand side. So to do that, I've got to twist that little joystick there next to the stereo. So I have to lean forward. Well, now I'm not really set up to see where I'm adjusting the mirror. <laughs> And that's the kind of thing you just kind of live to learn to put up with, but uh, it's charming in its own way. Uh, you do have, yeah, this AM, FM, Delco. What do we got? The Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, it might have been every, better for everyone if he died under Oh, I'm kidding. I don't want him to die under the bridge. Anyway, uh, we've got a window sticker from this car and the most fantastic users. I mean, if that's not straight out of 1984, I don't know what it look. You've got like what looks like a Commodore 64. Uh, you've got this great, you know, Tron era. Uh, script for the 84 Oldsmobile. Uh, remember, 84 was also when the Olympics uh, were in Los Angeles. I think Sarajevo as well. Uh, but all the Russians skipped out on uh, Los Angeles. They didn't come. The Soviets gave up. So did the Eastern Bloc countries. Uh, previously to them dropping out, McDonald's had tied one of their games to <clears throat> Olympic gold medals and would give away free food based on uh, you know, how many medals the American team won, how many gold medals. Well, they didn't expect Russia to drop out, so they ended up giving away a shitload more Big Macs than they ever thought they were going to, and that fresh off a mass shooting. So it was not a very good year for McDonald's. Uh, also during the Super Bowl came that Macintosh ad, the 1984 thing, that famous ad uh, where he flung the javelin at the computer screen or whatever it was, and that apparently changed Super Bowl history. So uh, anyway, very interesting year. Uh, window sticker. Uh, this could have come with a 3.8 uh, Buick engine. Thank God it didn't. It got the upgraded 5 liter V8 four barrel and uh, all this other stuff, uh, you know, to uh, bring up the price to a whopping 13455 uh, which I think was a pretty damn good value back in 1984, uh, which is why it got the approval of Dick Van Patten. Anyway, nice load of books in that weird little glove box off there to the right. We also have a lighter. Let's see if anyone smoked in this car. Yeah, apparently not. So, it wasn't a real ladies car. Uh, Alright, well, let's just go for a spin. Now, I've gotten some flack about Peter's gait being slow, you know? Yeah, it, it sure is, and I don't know why, and... <laughs> I mean, I don't care. Uh, it just is what it is. Um, you know, should he speed it up? Probably. You know, how does one do that? I don't have a clue, so I'm just going to stay out of it. And in fact, I'm going to be turning right into the sun. So instead of that, I'm going to pause the camera here. And uh, we will uh, pick it up again when I turn right down the street. Probably miss that woman with the hat, but uh, we've seen her enough. All right, there we go. So you have to remember, this car was an absolute gem in the middle of GM's weird malaise period. I mean, this is when the Cavalier, the early Cavalier, was competing uh, with the Japanese imports and doing a piss-poor job of it. Although the later Cavalier became a pretty good car in its own pathetic little way. Uh, but, um, you know, the GM just didn't know what the hell was going on. They really didn't have a clue. They were downsizing, they were upsizing, well, they didn't upsize anything, but uh, they were all screwed up. And and this was truly one of the last great GM cars, so of course they got rid of it. I mean, why wouldn't they? And it was replaced with a, you know, kind of a nasty little front-wheel drive model that seemed like half the car. Uh, now, when I hopped in this thing to drive it, I couldn't believe how much I loved it. I really couldn't. I mean, I know I like these cars, and I know that I'm rambling, but, I mean, some cars just 
are still together and this is one of them and out of all the cars that I've done in the last week on these videos these big Luxo barges I have to say this is the best driving one and I never would have predicted it I really thought one of the town cars or that big 76 olds that would uh, that would cut the mustard more than any of them but this thing just feels gorgeous I mean the steering feel the road feel and not sporty but just lovely God, I could put a million miles on this car. And there you feel that V8 pep, more than enough to keep it, uh, you know, going in the flow of traffic. It's a great highway cruiser. Love that it's a coupe. Uh, this is one that I would own, I have to say. This is a car that I would cheerfully uh, own myself and, you know, drive around and have maybe put big wheels on it, and base in the trunk and, you know go commit some major crimes or whatever those kind of cars do but uh, it'd be a lot of fun uh, so anyway there it is this is a 1984 Oldsmobile Delta 88 Royale Brome Coupe <laughs> I mean you know I'm starting to realize why they did shorten all the names to numbers and letters it just became a bit over the top by the time they finished with these things uh, that was a little bit silly uh, but what a great driving car, and what a throwback to a true, you know, American big-bodied coupe. Uh, you know, the last of really the great Oldsmobiles, other than the wagons, maybe. And uh, forever after, it just became sort of weird, uh, planned obsolescence, front-wheel drive things that just didn't work out that well. I mean, I liked some of them, but they really didn't work out that well. Cars like this are more sealed in time, easier to have as collectibles, and uh, will continue to hang around as long as you want to maintain them and that's pretty cool stuff so uh, anyway there it is 84 old I'm not going to say that name again Delta 88 uh, 70 what's this thing have 74,000 miles it's available at uh, Auto House of Naples on the website 239-263-8500 uh, or uh, www.autohousenaples.com don't go to the old Audi Europa site it's defunct it's gone we're moving forward with the uh, with the new system. So, uh, if you have an interest in this one, give the guys a call. Uh, thank you very much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.